The second passage in the set is what we're going to summarize now. It is about words in the Oxford English Dictionary and about compilation of dictionaries and so on. Uh, the book, the passage was easy to read and therefore you save a lot of time in reading. And if you're careful, uh, this could go, this was the easiest uh, uh, passage in the set. All right, because the language was easy, most of it was easy and the questions were more or less easy to moderate. All right. The team at the Oxford English Dictionary felt some nervousness about writing the definition of TERF, an acronym. Acronym is where you use the first words of uh, first letters of each of the words. So it's a kind of abbreviation for trans exclusionary radical feminist. T for trans, E for exclusionary, R for radical, F for feminist. Just like NASA is an acronym. So the a dictionary felt nervous slightly, uh, you know, not very sure about giving the definition of TERF. What is TERF? It's an acronym for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist, which this month has been added to its pages. So since it's a dictionary, it has to give a definition and the meaning. To a certain extent, it's like any other word, says Fiona McPherson, a 50-year-old lexicographer from Grangemouth, Stirlingshire who has worked at the dictionary since 1997. So this is what one of the workers of the dictionary says, that it's, it's, it's like any other word. Turf is like any other word in, in one way. But it would be disingenuous. It would be wrong. Ingenuous means innocent, naive. It would be wrong or, or shrewd to say that it is exactly the same. It would be wrong to say it's exactly the same. It's like other words, but in many ways, it's not exactly the same. Why? There seems to be more at stake, more at risk here. You want to be accurate. You want to be neutral. But it's a lot easier to be neutral about a word that is controversial. Now, when you're writing a dictionary and a definition in the dictionary, you want to be correct, accurate, and you also want to be neutral. She says it's very easy. It's easier to be neutral about non-controversial words. Next. The OED has served as a lexical record of, world's, of the world's most widely spoken language and its culture since it was founded in the mid-19th century. It's been the most, it's a lexical record of English, words used in English. Post-truth was added into, and, and it tells you how it's a lexical record, what were, what were the words added in different years. The English language evolves at such a pace that the OED lexicographers, the goalposts are so much, aren't so much shifting as printing away from them. So you have a goal. Okay, I have got 500 words to complete. Correct? But because the English language is evolving so fast, that goalpost is shifting. It's not just shifting, it is printing away. That means the language is evolving very fast with a lot of new words being added. Once a word has gained its place, it may be moved, for example, to be listed as a variant spelling, but it is never taken out. That means the dictionary only expands. So you never take out a word from the dictionary. You may keep it as a variant spelling, but you always, once a word has found a place in the dictionary, it stays. So a dictionary can only grow. It can only go bigger. It can never be shrunk. The word and, and this is even true of mistakes. So even when mistakes are there in the dictionary, they continue. They don't do anything to it. That's the example he has given about Astabroad. Then he says, nor is the dictionary, Oxford English Dictionary, is not limited to British English. It uses English words which are used in other countries as well, from Singapore to Jamaica, all kinds of world English. If they use Indianism, they do actually. Quite a few Indian expressions like guru and all have been added. All right. Now, next. So because it adds and adds not just British English and other uh, from other type, other versions of English also, what happens? The resulting dictionary details some 600,000 words. The most recent print edition, the second published in 1989, fills 20 volumes and sets you back by 862 pounds. If you want to buy an Oxford English Dictionary, you have to buy 20 vol and you want to buy all 20 volumes of it, you have to pay around 862 pounds. The initial plan was to complete the third edition by 2005, but 17 years later, later, its editors are only halfway through because there are so many words. 
they wanted to uh, start the next uh, to publish the next edition by 2005 but their editors are only halfway through to an outside observer the scale of the project its ambition and the granular detail it's not just ambitious that it has to cover as many words as possible in the ever changing language also is very detailed very very takes care of the grain granular detail minute details seems almost impossible so when you think of that it seems almost impossible but again when i put this to macpherson she's unfazed unfazed means she's not not disconcerted not doesn't lose her composure what does she say she says we are in trouble if the language ends and not just professionally she says we as human beings are in trouble if english ends and i'm not talking just professionally because i'm working uh, at oxford english dictionaries the english language is huge so therefore the job we are doing is a big job the language is humongous so the job also is big but i don't find it overwhelming it's energizing it's exhilarating she says i the, the scale of the project doesn't overwhelm me i'm not daunted or totally lost in it i feel energized and i feel thrilled Bernadette Patton, an Australian former art teacher who's been at OED since 1987, recalls spending four weeks revising business, the dictionary, the definition for which was first published in 1888. There was almost nothing about commercial enterprise. You're covering 120 years of development in probably the most enormous area of activity in the 20th century. It was hell at that time, but it's really interesting to see it at the end. So she was revising business, the definition of business. Now, with the definition, as business changes, the definition also has to change, right? So she was, there was initially there was nothing commercial associated with the word dictionary. So she says when she tried revising the definition of business, initially the the work seemed terrible, but at the end of it, she says it was nice. Question seven: According to paragraph two. Which of the following actions is most likely to be taken by OED lexicographers? What are they likely to do? According to paragraph 2, let's quickly go back to paragraph 2. What was paragraph 2 about? This is paragraph 1. This is paragraph 2. The OED has served as a lexical record of the world's most widely spoken language, that is English and its culture, and then it tells you what words were added as they evolve, as the language evolved, right? So the OED lexicographers keep adding new words as they are used in the common parlance in the culture. Okay, <clears throat> he is asking... Question 7. According to paragraph 2, which action is most likely to be taken by OEDO lexicograph lexicographers? So remember, new word, they're going to add it. They're going to try to be neutral and accurate by the first paragraph. But here, new words, the word that best depicts an experience of a culture or of a particular experience, they're going to put it. According to adding another sense of the word ghost, which had been skipped earlier, despite its prevalence since the last century. New sense of the word as the language evolved. Why would we look at the old sense of the term, right? Doesn't make sense. Adding an archaic word, anon, which has not been part of the dictionary as it is informal. The author talks about adding new terms as the language evolves. The pandemic, he has talked about the pandemic and how new words were there. Those examples, if you remember. So old, past, outdated is not what paragraph 2 is talking about. Adding a recently used word, fubbing, even though it's a portmanteau of two already existing words. Portmanteau is combination. Phone and snubbing. Yes, this is exactly what they would do woke what is the cancel culture those have been given as examples it's of the language as it is used in the common culture of the of people in their everyday life so this word has been recently used so they will add it to the dictionary most logical according to what has been given in 
a paragraph too. So C is my answer. But let's quickly look at D. Retaining an archaic word betwixt, even though the word between is used instead nowadays. They would use the new word. Okay. Or we don't know what they do to old words. They keep it. They anyway keep it. But the second one didn't say that. It said that the most likely thing they're going to do is add new words as they happen. So our answer is C.